Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with the second and final part of Oversimplified's The First Punic War, Part 2. Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love it if you join the Discord and follow me over at Twitch. And remember, Oversimplified most likely will be claiming this video, so I will not be making any sort of revenue from it. So please go make sure you check out my non-Oversimplified videos. Um, Simply my overly sarcastic production videos. Those videos I feel like are probably my most fun videos that I have on this channel. Uh, OSP and um, what was the other channel? Potential History, I think was the name of it. The name of the channel. Did I have a bromance with Potential History? I think it was. I told him I loved him, and he said he loved me too. So you know what? Check those out too. <laughs> tangent sidetracking i get easily distracted um yeah we left off at after the roman victory at the uh we left off with the roman victory at the battle of cape Echnomus. let's go ahead and see how the rest of the first punic war plays out part two After the gigantic battle at Cape Echnomus, the Romans were now free to land on African soil. And so, they did. The Carthaginians... They're probably, they're probably not going to be able to keep their supplies going, chose though. ...chose to focus on defending the city of Carthage itself. So the Romans immediately took the city of Aspis and were then free to raid and plunder the countryside. They took over 20,000 slaves and a ton of booty. But yeah. then, yes. some orders arrived from the Senate. Send home the booty. Oh, but I want to stay. Not gonna say I'm no, not. Steve, not you. They mean the treasure. Well, we are not watching any more of this filth. So the other. This one has been. I don't. You know. A good amount of oversimplified videos. I I'd say you could probably like. I would say, uh, no, the Hitler one's probably not. <laughs> World War II, maybe. This one feels like one of the ones where Oversimplified's really testing the waters of if, if it'd be okay to show to a classroom. Um, this one probably not shown to a middle school classroom, for sure. High school? Mmm... Could maybe get away with it for maybe seniors. I don't think a teacher could do it to freshmen. Just trying to think. I never got. I don't think I ever had got to watch Oversimplified when I was in high school. When was the first Oversimplified? 2017. That'd be when I was graduating. <laughs> no, he would have been back 2016, 2015, wasn't he? Fuck, I don't remember. The consul left with the booty, leaving Regulus and his forces on their own. And they began advancing towards Carthage. So they no longer have their ships guarding their rear. That totally is a great idea. Yeah. Along the way, according to the ancient writer Livy, they encountered a literal dragon. <gasps> now Livy was a Roman historian, so his account may be slightly exaggerated. But this... Hold on, there were words at the bottom there. It's also possibly a translation issue. Perhaps the Bagratus dragon was just a really big snake. Then again, maybe it never happened at all. A lot of ancient history is disputed like that, but hey, since you took the time to pause the video and read this, I just want to let you know you're real swell, and I'm sorry I told you to shut up in part one. I, I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> but this... I believe. As the Romans <laughs> continued to plunder, the Carthaginian people flooded into the city. Now, not only was it in a major panic, but it was so crowded, the people began to starve. Don't panic, everyone! Look, I know you're all starving, but I still have food for me. And that's what matters most. So, you know, it's not all bad. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. And you idiots wonder why you're starving? <laughs> oh well, it's just more food for me. Things weren't looking. The chaos. The chaos oversimplified. Good for Carthage. 
they had to do something to stop the Romans rampaging throughout their land. So they decided, finally, it was time to put an end to it. Dun, they dun, dun. headed out and set up on rough hilly terrain overlooking the Roman camp, and they prepared for battle. Now, I like the slight detail here of who the Carthaginian cavalry would be made up. It would be made up of um, Libyan, modern day Libyans, uh, I believe. Is the part. I can't remember the name of the tribe, though. Or if they were literally just called Libyans. But, yeah. They would be the cavalry. Nice. While the Carthaginians were the traditional masters of the sea, on land, they weren't always the brightest. Case in point, <laughs> setting up in this position overlooking the Roman camp was just about the stupidest thing they could have done. Why? Well, there's something you gotta understand about Carthage. The Carthaginian land forces actually suffered from a multitude of different issues. First of all, since the Carthaginians were rich, 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 they could afford to pay a huge number of foreign mercenaries to fight for them. These As I said in part one, I knew I was right. Mercenaries actually made up the vast majority of Carthage's forces, and therefore, Carthage's land armies were a melting pot of many different cultures. This, however, meant that if a battle wasn't going their way, there could be loyalty issues. Man, I ain't getting paid enough for this. You Balearic slingers better not be thinking of running away. What did he say? I don't know, man. I don't speak Phoenician. Let's get out of here. Clearly, there were also language issues. The military generals tended to be Carthaginian, but they made a lot of strange decisions. For example, one of the most feared assets of the Carthaginian the army were the war elephants. To a Roman soldier who had never even seen an elephant before, this was like fist fighting, a literal monster. Yet the Carthaginians continually kept placing the elephants in the rear, where they were no use. I feel like I'm always waiting for my big break. In a similar fashion, the neighboring region of Numidia provided Carthage with the most no, not, ah, oh, yeah, it was the Numidians, not the fucking Libyans. Hannibal would be from Libya, though, wouldn't he? Skilled cavalrymen in the world, but the Carthaginians often chose to fight on rough, uneven terrain, where horses and elephants were less effective. And so, in this case, when the Carthaginians again chose the rough terrain near the Roman camp, the Roman... All I'm saying is, from what I remember of Rome Total War I... The Carthaginians were always a pain in the ass to fight for me. Oh, it wasn't as easy as the Romans are having it right now. I'm just saying. Easily sent them packing. Wow, Regulus. We're mere miles from Carthage. You sure are amazing. Yes, Steve. I know. <sighs> Steve? What's the matter? We've almost won. I just wish I could be as great as you, Regulus. Steve. You're amazing. I mean, look at this thing. It's unbelievable. I know, but I mean, like, at war stuff. Definitely probably wouldn't be allowed at a... <laughs> shown by a teacher. I'm such a noob. My tanks... Too, too much booty. ...always get blown up. I can't even fly an aircraft straight. Uh, tanks? Aircraft? What are you talking about, Steve? I'm talking about free-to-play online multiplayer combat game. He's <laughs> so fucking smooth about it. And this Most video's of the time. sponsor... War Thunder! War Thunder is the most comprehensive view. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Invading Africa, getting some booty, and sending the Carthaginians packing. Everything was looking up for Regulus. A Roman victory seemed like it was only a matter of time. But then, Regulus realized something. He had been consul for almost a year, oh, and no. his term was coming to an end. Oh, he no. knew that if his successor took over and he finished the job, then he would get the naked statues, not Regulus. And there was no way Regulus was going yeah. to allow that. Here we go. So he jumped the gun. You there, Carthaginian boy. I want you to deliver a message to your elders. I, Marcus Attilius Regulus, demand the total and unconditional surrender of Carthage. Unconditional surrender? Jeez, at least lay siege and starve us all to death first. Just deliver the message, you punk! He demands your total surrender. What? <laughs> Jeez, at least lay siege and starve us all to death first. Hey, that's what, that's I, what said. I said. Well, boys, this Roman thinks we're out. But we're not out, are we, boys? No! We'll do what we always do in times like this. Panic? 
Hire somebody else to solve our problems for or us. That. Darren, that works. bring in the Spartan. Regulus's overly harsh demands had had the unintended effect of reinvigorating Carthaginian resolve. They brought in a mercenary from the famed land of Sparta, named Z Never heard of it. Xanthippus, to help dig them out of this situation. And we all know what Spartans are like. <laughs> Xanthippus showed up and immediately took charge. He had a look around and said, You idiots! Put the elephants in front of the army so they can smash into the Romans and stop fighting on rough, uneven terrain. Find a big flat field so your superior cavalry can do their job. And what's this I hear about you giving a speech telling everyone they're gonna die? Hey, I was just telling the people the truth. You're a politician. Lie to the people. I fucking love you, oversimplified. And so Xanthippus led out the newly reformed Carthaginian army to meet Regulus in the Battle of the Bagradas River. The elephants, Bagradas. now in the okay, front, type smashed of into the Roman lines, causing disarray. The cavalry, with total freedom of movement, outflanked the Roman infantry. Thanks to this impressive Spartan, the battle was a total Carthaginian victory. Woo! And Xanthippus, for his stunning victory, was forced to flee Carthage because the leadership got jealous. <laughs> Regulus, the Roman consul, was captured during the battle. Legend has it, he was brought before the Carthaginian council, and they made a proposition. Well, Reggie, not looking so good anymore, is it? Looks like we beat you pretty bad, huh? <laughs> Up yours, you punic pansies! Now, now, Regulus, nobody likes a sore loser, do they? No. How about <laughs> this? We're gonna send you back to Rome, and you convince the Roman Senate to surrender to us. If you fail, though, you gotta come back so we can torture you to death. Okay? Okay. You promise? I promise. Hey, guys. Whoa! Regulus! We thought you got captured. I did, but they sent me back to convince you to surrender. Well, should we? Surrender? No! Never surrender! Give him hell, boys. They're at the end of their rope. Anyway, I gotta go be tortured to death now. What? Yep, part of a deal I made. It's a long story. Whoa, hey, wait! Regulus! No, no, it's cool, guys. I promised. Regulus! This is ancient times. We massacre entire populations. We chop pets in half. You can break a promise. No, Tim! You never break a promise. That's... Too far. And so Regulus went back to Carthage. He fought. He, he actually fucking did. Oh, he's fucking stupid. And was tortured to death. And for keeping his promise, he was immortalized as the leading symbol of Roman virtue. Meanwhile, after huh. their defeat in Africa, the remaining Roman okay. survivors still in Africa were still in Africa, and they needed to be rescued. So the Romans sent their fleet to pick him up and bring him home. They successfully fended off a Carthaginian fleet, grabbed the survivors, and made their way to Sicily. A great their way. success. But then, things took a turn for the worse. <gasps> Gasp. Uh, sir, that cloud looks kind of angry. Fear not, coward. If we Romans can build a war fleet from scratch and defeat the Carthaginian Empire at their own game, why then even Mother Nature herself will crumble before you know that's probably not a good thing to do in the ancient times i laugh in the face of mother nature ha <laughs> ha see come on guys laugh at mother nature with me ha <laughs> ha uh -huh. <laughs> 284 ships nearly 80 percent of the roman fleet was destroyed wow as many as a hundred Thousand men drowned in a terror. I've never heard of this. I don't. I don't think I've ever heard of this. Terrifying act of nature. Never before had Rome lost so many men in a single incident. A hundred thousand casualties for any other nation would be crippling. Any other nation would hastily sue for peace. Any other nation would spend decades trying to recover. But Rome was not just any I other hear no bell. infamous for its unrelenting determination in the face of overwhelming odds. Rome said, well, I guess we'll just have to build another fleet. And they did. 
In just three months, they built 220 more ships. An astonishing feat. The Romans sent out their brand spanking new war fleet, and... Oh, God damn it! They got caught in another storm. You fucking serious? This time, a whole nother fleet was lost. And still, How many the men, Romans though? did not give up. The Carthaginians couldn't believe it. Their enemy had just lost hundreds of thousands of men, had two fleets almost entirely destroyed, and they still wouldn't surrender. As one Roman poet put it, the victor is not victorious if the vanquished does not consider himself so. In typical Roman fashion, after a short break, they were once again building another oh God. fleet. However, third time's now, the charm, I guess. After all the disasters at sea, the focus began shifting back to the land campaign in Sicily. The Carthaginians, overconfident from recent successes, attempted to retake Panormus, but the Romans countered the terrifying war elephants by throwing stuff at them and scaring them away. Having stopped the Carthaginian advance, the road was now open to the final Carthaginian stronghold on the island, Lilibium. Lilibium was an extremely well-fortified city. In 250 BC, the Romans laid siege. The Carthaginian defense, however, was fierce, and skilled blockade runners kept the city supplied. Progress was so slow that the siege would last another nine years. Wow. To make matters worse, the Carthaginians later sent possibly the greatest military general of the time, a man named Hamilcar Barca, to the island. He engaged in a skillful campaign of guerrilla warfare behind enemy lines, and for the remainder of the war, he was a major thorn in the Roman side. For now, with the deadlock siege at Lilibium and the new Roman fleet at sea, things seemed to be at a standstill, and the Romans had to do something to break the deadlock. Thankfully, the Roman consul, Clodius Pulcher, had an idea. He tried to get things moving by attacking the Carthaginian fleet at Trapana. Now, before a battle, to predict if they would win, it was common for the Romans to look for signs from the gods. This could mean observing the weather or inspecting some cow livers. Yeah, you know, yeah. Typical religion stuff. Yeah. In this case, Pulcher reportedly tried to feed some sacred chickens, but unfortunately for him, they wouldn't eat a crumb. A very bad sign. Well, he said, if they won't eat, then let them drink, stupid chickens. We'll observe the weather instead. Gods, give me a sign. Uh, ignore that. Okay, a different sign. This? If I can get this piece of paper into that trash basket, we'll win. Okay, if I can stand here silently for five seconds and do nothing, we'll win. One minute, two. Ah, dang, damn it! Pulcher chose to ignore the signs from the gods, and in the following battle, the superior Carthaginians tore them to shreds. It also didn't help. What happened to their fucking corvuses? Did they get rid of them? That by now the Romans had removed the Corvus to stabilize their ships, and without their secret weapon. Oh God damn it, Rome! It was a disaster, and Pulcher was disgraced. To make matters worse, the victorious Carthaginian fleet then went on to intercept a Roman supply fleet on its way to Lilibium. As they approached, however, they saw the signs of an incoming storm, so they took shelter. The Romans, on the other hand, said, Onward, men! No, Set no. sail! We've got to deliver these supplies stat! But sir, those clouds, don't you think we ought to have learned our lesson by now? Yes, no. Brian, we ought to have. But we haven't. Another fleet and 50,000 men lost in 50. another storm. Disaster. Now, at this point, Bro. there still really isn't a clear winner. You've had to have lost over 200,000 by now. That's like an, that's a, for this time period, that's like a generation of men. Sure, the Romans have captured most of Sicily and cornered the Carthaginian land forces at Lilibium. But the continued disasters at sea were critically depleting their resources, and without a strong fleet, Rome could not win. Meanwhile, Hamilcar Barca was still knocking about and creating even more problems. So, where do we go from here? How does this war finally end? By now, the two sides had been fighting for 23 years. God. They were exhausted. Their money, their resources, their strength were all utterly spent. The Carthaginians in particular were Pink eager to Carthage. see the war end so they could get back to trading and making money. So after the latest Roman disaster at sea, 
They said, look, there ain't no way in heck the Romans can come back again. They can't possibly afford to build another fleet. They're done. That's it. Recall the navy, repurpose them as merchant ships, and let's get back to making some money! <laughs> Assuming the Romans would soon make peace, an anti-war faction within the government recalled a large portion of the navy, leaving Hamilcar on his own. Oh, the no. victors appeared to be declaring themselves victorious. Meanwhile, the vanquished were getting ready for round five. The Romans built another fleet, oh, this God. time heavily relying on patriotic donations from the upper classes to afford it. And once again, they put to sea. Uh, sir, the Romans have built another fleet. Oh, for goodness sake, Clarence, can't you see I'm busy rolling around in this pile of money? But sir, I don't care anymore, Clarence. I just I have money. Don't care. The Carthaginian politicians made a fairly lackluster final effort with a poorly built fleet to supply their forces in Sicily. But when the brand new Roman fleet caught them at the Battle of the Agates, even without their signature Corvus, they dealt them the final blow. And that was that. 23 years of war. Neither side could afford to keep fighting, but the Romans showed that they intended to anyway. The Carthaginians had no choice but to throw in the towel. The war had been long and hard for both sides, but in the end, it was Roman determination that won the fight. You know, I wonder if Steve with the dump truck ever made it back to Rome. I hope he's okay. The Romans had spent the entire war plan. Kill the Carthaginians. Win the war. The war, trying to find a way to deliver the knockout blow. They learned how to build a fleet and engage in naval combat. They developed ingenious new ways of waging war. They attempted an invasion of the Carthaginian heartland, and whenever disaster struck them, they always came back again and again. again and the Carthaginians, again. on the other and hand, again. spent the entire war watching whatever Rome did, oh, and God. then figuring out if we can build a war fleet, we can build an elephant. How to respond? They were much more passive, and so it's no wonder then that when both sides were close to collapse, Rome was the one who figured out how to go that little bit further. In 241 BC, the Carthaginian politicians sent word to Hamilcar Barca that he was on his own and could choose to make peace with the Romans if he wished. Hamilcar was stunned. He felt betrayed by the politicians. Some sources say he refused to... His beard is fucking magnificent. ...to even negotiate. Nevertheless, terms had to be drawn up. Well, Hammy, I'm glad you Carthaginians have finally come to your senses and recognized who the true winner is. How many fleets did you lose? Da, 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 da. Okay, <laughs> here are our terms. You leave Sicily to us and return all of our prisoners. You're not allowed to make war against Syracuse or her allies, and you have to pay us 2,200 talents of silver over the next 20 years. What's a talent of silver? Well, to put it in perspective, in the year 2022, that'll be worth around, let's say, 40 million US dollars. Ay caramba! That will cripple us! One talent of silver is 40 million US dollars, or 2,200 talents of silver is 40 million US dollars. Wow, we got a real smart guy over here. Yeah, that's kind of the point, you dingus. Ugh, I guess I have no choice. I accept. Great. Oh, by the way, we changed our minds. You actually have to pay us 3,200 talents of silver over 10 years. Thanks for accepting. Dude! See you later. Ha That's actually less. Yeah, that's less. Hey, you didn't let me say on cool. He didn't let me stay on cool. The treaty was extremely punishing, and by switching up the terms at the last minute, they enraged the Carthaginians. But still, one of the longest and deadliest wars at the time was finally but a over. Lot. The Romans had won. They achieved their aim of gaining Sicily, and even though it wasn't part of the peace deal, they took advantage of a weakened Carthage and grabbed Corsica and Sardinia as well. Roman expansion beyond the Italian peninsula had just begun. The Romans hoped that now the Carthaginians would forever be under their thumb. Unfortunately, the harsh terms they placed on the Carthaginians at the end of the war He's setting up for his next anger, video. One that would come back to haunt them. One day, Carthage will have its revenge. That's nice, dear. I'm serious, woman. Maybe not in my lifetime, but perhaps in his. My beautiful son. You 
are born into a momentous destiny. You shall be Rome's greatest enemy. You'll tear Rome limb from limb. You'll burn their yes. city into the ground. Yes. You'll slaughter their people. Yes. Men, women and children. Yeah. My child, you are vengeance. Yes. Stop telling our baby he's vengeance, but he is, Barbara. He's vengeance. That may be so someday, but for now, our okay, son I got a has bit a name, it. and you should call him that instead. His name is... I think... <laughs> the second... Yep. Yeah. So Don't he's gonna... To... He's gonna go through... Um... He's gonna go through each Punic War. That's his next series. And I'm actually guessing we're probably not going to have to wait too long for uh, the second Punic War. I don't I think that might have been why he was gone longer. He wanted to set some things up here in the first Punic War videos. I'm guessing we might get it before the end of the year. Um, I'm actually kind of expecting there's a chance we could get it within the next couple months. Um, more likely, I'd say in December, I think we'll get the next two parts. We'll get uh, the second Punic War. Um, if I'm remembering my history right, though, the second Punic War, I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes a three-parter um, because a lot of shit happens. So we'll see how he does. But the part two was a bit weaker than part one. I'm going to be honest, actually. Um... Maybe I'm growing out of oversimplified style. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's me, but it wasn't landing quite as, as it used to for me. I mean, there were still genuinely funny moments. Uh, the information he's able to compact and also expand upon. But it felt like, it feels like he's been adding a lot of fluff to his videos now that aren't really informative. That's that's what I felt I felt it a little bit in the pig war. Didn't really feel it in the Russian Revolution. I have to rewatch them, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but here in these Punic War videos, these two videos, I felt like there was a good a solid amount of fluff um to add runtime and uh add some like jokes or whatever and some of this stuff didn't necessarily feel like it was all that related to the video in terms of inform informative content whereas like if you look back at the hitler or world war ii videos civil war videos there were funny moments tied into the historical events um that didn't feel like fluff you know I guess with Hitler, I'd be talking about um, his dad beat him severely or whatever. The joke was, the running gag was for the Hitler video. Uh, Hitler oversimplified. Um, that felt related and informative. Um, but the gags here didn't. Like with Timmy. Um, or uh, what was his name? No, it wasn't Timmy. It was Steve. Steve, that one just felt unnecessary to me. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. So they're still good videos. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Go check out my other videos because this is probably going to be copyrighted. So, uh, please go show me some support elsewhere, either on Twitch, joining the Discord, or watching my other videos, liking and sharing my other videos. That'd be great. <sighs> Oversimplified has returned and he has blessed us. See you in the next video. Peace.